What's up my halflings? Greg Bear here. It's a very exciting day. Even though it's about 30 degrees outside and sleeting and snowing, it's about 70 degrees in here. I have my electric heater going and like the thumbnail suggested, I'm going to be bubble wrapping my greenhouse to insulate it. If you haven't heard of this before or anything, stay tuned. Got a lot of information to go over about bubble wrapping a greenhouse, so let's roll that intro. So let's talk about bubble wrap. I mean, most people know what bubble wrap is, but for those of you who don't, bubble wrap is two pieces of plastic sheeting with bubbles in between, like this right here. Now, why is that important in insulating a greenhouse? If you look at a normal greenhouse that has a plastic covering like mine, it's a single sheet. This is probably about four to six millimeters thick, and heat can pretty much instantly come out of it. It's pretty much just a wind barrier with a little bit of R value, probably no more than a one R value. But if you look at bubble wrap, it has bubbles in it. So what happens when the sun hits the bubbles is it heats up every individual bubble and heats the air inside of this. So when you apply bubble wrap to your greenhouse like this, and it's a colder day, instead of the heat getting wicked out of your greenhouse, the bubbles instead get the heat wicked out of them and it creates an air gap in between the outside and the inside. It's technically not the greatest insulator. I mean, sure, there's plenty of things out there that are better, but to have something that's translucent and insulated at the same time is very hard to find. And that's why bubble wrap is so great and it's very abundant and overall sort of cheap. I got my 48 inch by 65 foot roll of bubble wrap. It's half inch bubbles and I think it cost me $51 with free shipping on Amazon. And this will be enough to insulate my entire greenhouse, which is a six foot by eight foot by six and a half foot roof line. It's a gable style greenhouse. Now I'm not saying this is gonna keep your greenhouse completely warm at night. You will probably have to do external measures to do that, like running an electric heater, gas, wood. If you do geothermal or some kind of solar or thermal mass kind of heating thing, which if you guys don't want to think about that, I'll probably do that in future videos because I'd love to do that in here as well. Now, this will not completely eliminate your need for an external heating source at night, of course, because the R value of bubble wrap isn't more than five or so. And being in a northern climate like me, I'd need at least like an R30 value to even consider not having an external heating source in here after the sun goes down because it can drop from 70 or 80 degrees in here down to the temperature it is outside because that's just how it is. But it is a great start in a process eventually of getting thermal mass in here, getting a bunch of water barrels, maybe even doing a solar powered electric heater in here, anything like that. But for now, it's a great start and I've actually already got started with this. I work at a restaurant, so every time we get a package in, I actually take the bubble wrap home as well. So I've been doing it a little bit here and there as well. Give you a quick tour. Actually behind me, this entire roof line here is already bubble wrapped. This piece is probably worth like five bucks and I got it for free at my work, it's pretty awesome. And right behind me as well, got a lot of bubble wrap here. Every time we get new dishware in, it comes with this really thick bubble wrap on it. So I've been doing the door with these pieces. It's only been coming like a one foot by one foot piece here once in a while, but I just throw it on with packing tape and going from there. So what I'm definitely gonna start working on right now, we're gonna do this wall, this ceiling, hopefully that side and finish up on this side. And then whatever is left, I'm gonna throw up here because this is the north facing wall. I want this to be super insulated. And of course, on the outside of this, like my last video, I've got the leaf pile back here, which is about a foot thick. I still have to finish that up, so it'll be about up to here. And then I've got my reflective board here, which has an R value, I think of around four or five. And once the sun hits this, it reflects all the heat back in here, and it's really awesome. But we're gonna go from there. Like I said, I've got 65 feet of this uh, four foot roll, so I should be able to hit most of this with at least a single layer. And this specific roll, I got pretty lucky in. It's actually perforated every 12 inches, so I don't need to bring scissors out here. Just need to 
measure it out here to the length of the greenhouse and then just simply tear it down. It'd be a lot easier if I had two people, but what can you do? First piece cut and I'm just gonna tuck it under here and then tuck it under the support joist over here and then we can start taping it up. I'm just using packing tape. I don't know how long it's gonna honestly hold up. I've used it before to patch up the greenhouse. It lasts usually a couple of years, so I paid a dollar twenty-five for fifty yards of the packing tape. It's not a huge deal. It fails after a couple of years. I'll just go buy more. I could probably go buy some really nice packing tape. It's like heavy duty, like the T-Rex tape or Gorilla tape or anything like that. But I'm a cheapo, so I'm just giving this a try to see how it works for now. Got it loosely put in here now. Of course, it's flopping down a little bit because it's not all tight yet. I actually have the piece a little too big, but it's not that big of a deal. I can just use it for that door now, so no big deal. Now I just gotta start taping around this and tighten everything down so it's not flopping down like this and we'll be good to go on this roof line here. Got that side done now, as you can see. Looking pretty sharp. It's sagging in a little spots, but we're all pretty good. Now we're gonna tackle these walls right here. Should be quite easy. The roll is actually just about the width of the halfway point here. Since this is strapped in here, I didn't want to tuck it in under the unstrap and all that because of the wind and all that. So this should be a really easy job for these. And then we gotta tackle this one. I don't know exactly how. I'm gonna cut it to a good length to get this gable part here, but once we get to the square end here, it should be easy to come down on that. And then we'll see how much bubble wrap we have left to double up on some spots. Let's do it. Wall's done on this side. Let's do this side. I know you guys probably don't want to see one more time lapse of me taping this up for 20 minutes, so let's just skip to it being done. All right, it's done. Take a look. Completely bubble wrapped now. And I still have probably 15 or 20 feet of this left. So what I'm probably gonna do, of course not this video, because you guys don't want to see any more bubble wrapping in this time lapses or anything like that. I'm gonna do it off camera probably gonna throw another whole layer on this since it's the north side. I don't want to go crazy and put another layer on this because I mean to a point it's probably gonna start blocking light out it is a little bit opaque so I definitely want to get the most light in here I can on the south side but north side I'll insulate the heck out of this and who knows maybe I'll throw some on this even though it has the leaves behind it maybe I'll just insulate this again and I mean it has this polyboard too so triple up on this side get some nice insulation in here so I hope you guys found this video very informative. I don't know how many videos are actually out there for bubble wrapping greenhouses. I wanted to do this for years now. Just had a hard time actually finding big enough bubbles. Like these guys are huge. Most of the bubble wrap I've been seeing is like uh, probably like quarter inch bubbles, but these are half inch bubbles. So actually it's half inch height and I think they're one and a quarter inch across. So they're really big and they'll capture lots of heat and hopefully keep this thing warm, you know. As for the packing tape I'm using, I guess we'll see. Uh, Monday's gonna be over 60 degrees, so I'll probably expect to see temps in here above 80. So we'll see how well the packing tape holds up under really high heat like this. Hoping it goes well. With that being said, if you guys like this video, definitely consider subscribing to the Greg's Halfling family and become one of my halflings. If you like the video, definitely give it a like. And if you wanna stay in the know for all my future uploads, make sure you ring that notification bell and make sure it's set to notifications on always. And I hope to see you guys all on the next adventure. Greg Bear out.